All right, so in this video, I'm going to show what's new with CorelDRAW 2018 uh, plus the Memorial Designer updates for uh, this release. So one of the things is symmetry. Let's go ahead and show that off real quick. So this design has some symmetry in it. If I wanted to draw this from scratch, I would come up to Object and say Symmetry and then say Create New Symmetry. And what that does is it kind of puts that on a tracing layer and then it's got a line here for my one axis. If I want to do both directions at the same time, I'll mirror it in two ways. So it's going to go uh, both X and Y axes there. And then I can just take my polyline or whatever tool I'd want. I'll just go ahead and do it with the artistic media. And as I draw, see what happens here. So as I come around and draw this, I'm just doing this with my mouse so it's not going to be super clean, but just to show you how it works. So it draws it automatically in all of those different directions. If I were to clean this up a little bit, I, all I have to do is clean up this one side and I'll, I'll just smooth it out here. So if I smooth this out, then it's going to automatically smooth out the rest of them. So in a live manner, I'm able to draw just on one side and have it update all the way around. So that's new symmetry, um, which is pretty neat. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Don't need to save it. Uh, the next thing, let's go to this pedestal bench here. Okay, so a neat feature um, that they came out with is shadow text. So instead of having this text just blown right into the polish, Perhaps I'd want to do block shadow. So I can come here and grab block shadow. And depending on how thick you want your outline to be, um, you really just have to double whatever you want it to end up being. So if I did 0.18 inches, that would end up giving me my 0 0.09. And because it's just an effect applied to the text, if I were to pull this out, you'll see that that effect goes with it. Um, I can also then change the inside color to frosted. The great thing about this though is if I go to wireframe you'll see that it's actually already cuttable. You don't have to do anything else to get it ready to cut. So that's really neat feature there. So that's shadow, uh, shadow block text um, or block shadow I guess I should say. So another thing let's say this bench was a cremation bench and I wanted to draw this maybe and show where the core holes ought to be so that I could send it off to a manufacturer or show it one way. So I can grab it, I can change my outline size, maybe that's a little bit too thick. Um, and then I can change my outline. I'm going to double click down here and switch to a dashed outline. So let's just go with kind of a large dash here. So one of the things that you can do now is if we go to the object properties docker you'll see um, it's actually got our dash there and whatever line styles but right here we've got our corners so if I wanted to align our corners you make it so that these corners actually look nice I know that's just a little thing but it looks a lot better when you've got your corners lined up as opposed to how it was before where they don't necessarily line up so that's just a really small thing um, but you can control the the corners in dashed uh, lines and outlines. Another neat thing is um, being able to align and distribute nodes. So if I had some nodes, I'll just show you real quick. If I had these two nodes and I wanted to, I could distribute them or align them together. So if I go to the align and distribute docker, then we've got those selected and we'll just um, align them vertically. So you see how it aligns those perfectly there uh, with each other in line. So I could do the same thing for all of them at the same time. And it comes in handy when you're trying to line up panels and other s sorts of things. But aligning and distributing nodes is, is brand new there as well. Um, another thing, this um, project tracker. I really like this. It tells you how long you've been working on something. So if you wanted to track your time to see if maybe you're, uh, if you need to bill it out or if you want to track and see how long it takes you to do something and then later on you do the same task and see how long it takes you then, you know, kind of see where your growth is at. Or if you just need to track time for being able to pay your employees 
and know how long they've been working on a design. Um, you've got Project Tracker here, which is really nice as well. They've also added being able to do perspective on bitmaps, which I'm really excited about. So if I had this, and let's just rotate it there a little bit. So if I brought this in, an image, I'll just bring this in and power clip inside of that. So for right now, uh, it doesn't seem it doesn't it does work on power clips, but the stuff inside the power clips ends up um, staying where it's at instead of moving with it. So if you wanted to do this, you'd convert it to bitmap first, and we'll just go ahead and click OK. So now we've got a bitmap. So if I wanted to take this and copy it and go to my 3D pedestal bench here and paste it. So the top part of the bench is um, vectors and bitmap now since that's a bitmap. So I can grab both all of those together, hit Control G to group, go to effects and say add perspective, and then I can line up these corners and give it perspective this way. And the great thing is is that it's doing both the vectors and the bitmaps at the exact same time. So before you could only do um, vectors this way, you weren't able to do bitmaps. The next thing is uh, you can do it, the same thing applies, but let's say you know, you're doing it for like laser etchings. So I could take this whole stone that we've got here, I'm going to copy that, come to my 3D park bench design, and paste it and you group it together so that it's all one group and this one I've actually got a box here that's already got perspective applied to it so you just have to go up to effects copy effect perspective from and then click and it will um, rotate to that same perspective and then you can center left to right top to bottom on there and since this is the dark version I should be able to come over and then fill it in with granite fills and it should look pretty good um, we can also take off this black box there, and that way it'll fade a little better. So, pretty quick and easy way of showing a 3D laser etching design as well. So I'm, I'm really excited that you can do the bitmaps and vectors together in perspective. So that's just a few of the new things in CorelDRAW 2018, um, but let's talk a little bit about uh, what's new in our update too as well. So I'm going to close all this stuff out to show you how this works. So one of my bug fixes in this Memorial Designer update is let's say we had dimension lines on here. So I'll just grab a dimension line there and maybe one here. Before, when you would select dimension lines, um, and actually I'll, I'll show how that you can take this since it's just a an effect, you can then clear that block shadow and get it back to normal how it was before and maybe just shrink it back down to how it was. So. Anyway, you can take these, and even though there's dimension lines, you can hit the plot page before it would actually mess up and, and crash, but it removes those dimension lines now, so that's a, um, one of the updated features. We will close that. Oh, another thing too is if I had granite fills applied, um, when you save, it asks you to pull those granite fills out, and... Um, so you can go ahead and pull those fills out, say yes, and before, when you would open that back up, it would say, do you want to bring those granite fills back in, and you'd say yes, and then on the plot page, it would actually re-bring those fills back in, so that's fixed now. It will not bring the, the fills back in on the plot page anymore, so that's really nice. Um, now, if you click on any of these, that when there's no document open it will prompt you to open a document with the exception of shape builder it will automatically start a new document and start up shape builder so that's really good and if I were to close that you can also see that the open by number also works so I can go ahead and just type in a number and it would bring that design in so you don't have to have a document open for that anymore and it won't error out um, oh, another new feature is you can turn off snapping all at the same time, which is nice. You can also disable snapping on the fly while you're um, working with the shortcut Q, which is really nice. I don't have my workspace set up yet to do it, but that in 
when I've finished next week with the update, it'll it'll go ahead and work that way. Um, another thing is granite fills. So I've added a bunch of new granite fills, grass, bronze. Those have all been added into this. Um, I've got a quick 3D button here. It's nothing fancy, but if I were to take the die in the base and hit 3D, it would go ahead and give it a little bit of um, 3D perspective there. Um, so that's pretty nice to be able to do that. There were some bugs with Blastable and some of these other tools here, and so most, if not all of those bugs should be figured out, so if you run into any problems with those, please let me know, but they should be f fixed now so that you don't run into errors with those. If you do run into errors, it should actually um, prompt for you to send an error report to me so that I know that something's gone wrong. Uh, the first time that you do that, if it hasn't happened for a long time, you might need to wait a little bit for it to kick in to the server before it actually says that anything happened, but that's another new thing there as well. Um, another new uh, fix is if I had applied granite fills, for instance, so I'm going to just apply a red granite fill here. If I took the base and duplicated it with the plus on my numeric keypad and turned that black it, or white or whatever, it used to be that when I would then refill it, it would fill back in with polish um, or whatever it used to be filled in with. So that is no longer the case. It forgets the fills, which is nice so that I can then go ahead and change my uh, transparency or whatever the case may be so that I can get that to work a little bit nicer. Um, but it now forgets if I change it from um, from the 30% gray to something else, it will not apply the granite fills to that. Also, if you change it to something like red, it would keep it red and, and not mess with it that way either. So that's nice that that's been fixed. So for the most part, um, other than the granite fills, uh, for the most part it's been a lot of bug fixes and getting things uh, working a little bit nicer. Um, I will be adding new functionality like knockout tool will actually be replaced by a real tool down here in the toolbar so that you don't have to hit escape anymore in order to get out of it so that's really nice. It'll also have its own uh, custom icon so if I click on here you can see how it's got a KO down there so you'll know that you're in the knockout mode but you don't have to hit escape, you just switch right back to the next tool. So that's really nice, that'll be coming. Um, and there's a few other feature updates that will be coming hopefully by the end of the month, but I did want to get this out to you so that you could start using CorelDRAW 2018 and any of the new things or bug fixes that we've got going for you. So I really am excited, it's well worth the upgrade. Um, it's working very smoothly on my end and I would suggest um, that everybody get updated to the latest version. If you have any problems, just let me know. Thanks.